cool, cool, Big cool, cool, cool. Boom, 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 boom. What's up, people? What's up, people? Welcome to the Outtake Show. This is episode 43, the show where we give our outlandish takes within the movie and TV world. You got myself, the host of the most yard man, Jim, is in the building. Of course, we've got Mazda Benny in the building, the silent assassin. We've got a lot of stuff to go through today. Do we actually do we have a lot of stuff to go through? We do have a lot of stuff. Yeah. This is probably the busiest month when it comes to movie and TV. There's so much drops, oh, so much finishes. Yeah, like, I've been watching. I feel like my eyes are going square. Back to back. But I watched a movie, I watched a TV show, they went back to the movie, they went back to another TV show. It is crazy, but we're going to crush through a bunch of stuff today. Um, how are you feeling, Maz? I feel like Specsavers needs to give us like a sponsorship or something so we can get free eye tests because my eyes feel square. You know, like I've had a lot of screen real, time. My optician just literally sent me an email saying you're due for a lot of checkup because it's been a while. Yeah. I was like, you got, the results are going to look different than last time. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to see yeah. a downgrade. But nonetheless, we've got outtakes of the week um, where we do a news round. We talk about all the latest news that's going on. Um, we've got listed here a few of them. Yeah. I do you, think. do you want to do you want to go through the main ones first, or do you want to talk about? Oh, the one you mentioned off camera, the top films of the year. So oh far. yeah. Okay. That, that'll be quite interesting. Yeah. Okay. To breeze past. Right. So Variety released their top ten films of twenty twenty four. Yeah. So far, do you want to do any any guesses? Ooh, that's I feel like <laughs> audio listeners and viewers, if you're watching, join in. Come on, give us your suggestions, comment below or message us and let us know what you think they are. I think overall, everyone's going to say Doom Part 2. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that should be there. Ding! That's, that's, the, that's the, the, so much films came out this year. What else came out this year? I'll, I'll, okay, my personal film of the year that I really enjoyed, that I, I hope is on the list. Is Civil War. Uh -uh. Civil War's not on there? No. Civil War's not on there? No. Alright, okay. <laughs> this changes everything. Um, we all love Challengers. Challengers Ding. should be on there. Cool. Challengers, shout out to Challengers. Really great film. What, was, what other great films were out this year? You know what, yeah? I hope Fiosa is on there. Uh -uh. Fiosa is not in there. Okay, no. so Clay, why did no one like? I really like Fiosa. You know, it's annoying that it flopped to box office and then it's gone to streaming platforms already. It's crazy. Oh. But another show, another film that's gone to streaming platforms that is also good that I enjoyed, The Bike Riders. Ding. Calm. Say less. Um, I actually don't know the rest. Of you <laughs> you start. <laughs> don't know the rest. Okay, so we got <laughs> Bike Riders, Challengers, Calm, Daddyo, Daddyo, Daddyo. Okay. Femme, which actually, the reason why oh, you didn't get this femme. is because it had its UK release in 2023. Yeah, it's been out for a minute. So for us, we've already had it on streaming platforms. It's yeah. a signature entertainment film. Shout Fucking love. Yeah. Sorry. Love signature entertainment <laughs> films. I need to stop swearing so much. Shame, I need to stop as um, well. But I can't help it. Like I, I'm a southeast. I'm, I'm a little Cockney southeast London babe. I love a little <laughs> yeah, profanities. <laughs> love it. Love it. Um, Inside Out two. Oh, you know what? I should have said that. You know. And you know why you should have said that? Because yeah. you know the stats. Go on. I know you want to say it. <laughs> Inside two has um, generated eight hundred million. Um, it's from right now of this year. It's the highest grossing film. Um, I it think surpassed it was a... Doom. Yeah. It's past year for the highest scores in film this year. I think it's going to hit a bill before this year ends. It's definitely hit a bill for this I, year. I ends. still need to see it. Um, so. Yeah, same. We're yeah, black, I, want to the, take, I want to take my dad. The 2% of people in the world that hasn't seen, seen I mean, I've seen so many spoilers on TikTok already, which really Really? Oh, that's yeah. annoying. But, I didn't know yeah. it would do so well, but congratulations to Inside Out 2. Um, I mean, looking at the cast. You know, it's, yeah, got, it it's, got, cast. it's got our favourite it girl. But Pixel's been doing bad lately. Yeah. Yeah, but no, but like based off of the cast itself, I mean, yeah. it's got the it girl of the it girl for the year. Shout out, Ayo. Ayo. Kinds of Kindness? I just recently watched that. Yeah. We we have, I have some stuff to say about it, but I'm, I'm, some deep quite, about I'm quite that. surprised that it's the, the top movie of the year. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, well, we'll get into it. Okay. <laughs> Well, we'll circle back to that. <laughs> um, uh, People's Joker. The People's Joker. I never watched that or Don't heard about it or anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sweet Dreams. No, that's not one I don't know about. I mean, no, no, about that one. Yeah. And uh, Bad Faith. 
Me not now. Still don't know. Don't know about that but one, bruv. That one, yeah, uh, but, but yeah. But we also should have been on there. I don't know what's going on. But I think it's only too art- artsy for people to, to enjoy. To appreciate. But, okay. Well, at least, like, Femme got there, you know. Yeah. It's a British production film. Happy that very indie uh, film It was well. funded by the... Uh, BFI as well. Oh, so dope. It's, a, it's yeah. really nice to see that British film is having an impact internationally, especially yeah. in 2024. Very good. Um, especially with the whole turbulent situation that's going on in the film industry. So yeah. that's always quite nice to see. Definitely. Um, what else is there from uh, the outtake news of the week? <laughs> we have um, Keanu Reeves. With dreadlocks. Oh, bam, I saw that picture. I thought it was fake. I thought, you know, it's because of AI. I thought it was like an AI picture, but he's really got dreadlocks. Um, For a new film. Yeah. What's the name of the film? Uh, I, I think it's called The Last Bumber Club because it <laughs> might as well be. Like, bruv, are you playing with me? Bruv, what in the last club is that? I'm half Jamaican. And I'm so offended right now. <laughs> the last bumper club. Uh, <laughs> what? Not, I, I mean, I'm not sure if it, it can't actually. Be real. Like, I don't this know. This can't be real. Uh, we're gonna fact check that. The but thing is, like, Keanu Reeves is such a very interesting human being that I can believe that he has dreads for a film. I just I can't mean, believe it's it called doesn't, it the doesn't, last bumper club. It doesn't look like. I mean, for a wig. Look, <laughs> look where's good. the lace, baby? <laughs> <laughs> where's the lace? Hey, John Wick is tweaking. Yo. <laughs> John Wick goes to Jamaica. <laughs> you know when you know when people go to Jamaica and they come back with dreads. <laughs> you know, it's like Monica and Friends when she got the beads and she's just there like real? this. <laughs> he had a mission in, in Jamaica real quick, he had to get someone that came back. Yeah, um at least he can say hair and makeup didn't play games with that way. Sure, they laced uh, it in, boy. He had the gun on the face, yo, we messed up, he <laughs> gets <Yeah>, shot. <laughs> Proper melted. Um yeah. The last uh, bumper Would you watch that? A film called The Last Bumper Cut? I mean, bumper cut. I don't know if you can it's say my, that. It's, it's my, it's my, fa- well, it's a bad word. Yeah, but like, it it's, my fa- it's, it's my favorite. Your favorite word. It's my favorite. It's my favorite <laughs> patois, patois word. <laughs> I fucking love it. Patois. That, patois. Patois. <laughs> patois. I don't know. That's your favorite word to say. Bumper cut. It's, it's very good to say. Yeah, I'm, and say. blood clot. <laughs> Yeah. Damn. yeah no. Shout out to the last bumble car. It should be in <laughs> cinemas. <laughs> what the hell's uh, going on? We, we, we do actually need to fact check that, that title because I don't just. Uh, it has to be a joke. Yeah, it must be a joke. The pitch is probably real, but the title has to be a, uh, a joke. Um, what else is there? Uh, my, one of the, my favourite, most iconic films that came out from Pixar. They're, they're having its 17th anniversary. Oh, you said this, yeah, Ratatouille. Ratatouille. Because yeah. I killed a man with this thumb, <laughs> right? <laughs> I broke the ozone layer with a pen. Iconic. And uh, what's his name? Josh, Josh O'Connor? Yeah. Um, everyone's favourite rap boy of the summer. Yeah. That's one of his favourite films. films. Top four letterbox. He Ratatouille. Top four. Yeah. No, Ratatouille is a classic. Is a classic. No, if you don't like Ratatouille, you're bad vibes. <laughs> is that, <laughs> no, is no, that no. the benchmark? No, no, no. But like, like, deep it, how many people do you know that don't like Ratatouille? Yeah, it's very... It's very if you limited. don't like Ratatouille, you're bad vibes. Yeah, you have to question yourself as a human being if you don't like that film. So... That film was, that film was incredible. You know, it's, like I said before, it doesn't make sense. The film doesn't make sense, but it's very enjoyable film. But anyone can cook. A rat. I mean... You, you, you saw, walked into the kitchen you, and no, saw a rat you, cooking, cooking. What are you But you, you, saw, you, saw, you saw me cook. You're not a rat, Maz. <laughs> <laughs> what? Rat girls for summer, baby. It's a rat girl summer. Speaking of cooking, <laughs> the, the Bear Food Challenge video is out now on YouTube, so do check it out. <laughs> but I've got Maz and the Latin go against small town critics to see who's the best chef. Um, was I was I Aladdin's Remy? <laughs> There's a clip. There's a clip that I posted that should be up right now. Where you, where you should say about talk about you and you're just you're just cooking your heads down, focused, locked in. And it was like Maz is locked in. You just you just went through a whole whole, whole thing right now. <laughs> should we go? Through, should you talk about it briefly? So if you guys don't know, on YouTube we got a, a few challenges going on. Um, so what we're doing now is doing more content outside of just sitting down talking about movies, doing stuff that relates to the movies or TV show. So there's a hit TV show out right now that everyone knows about called The Bear. And it's literally the main topic of The Bear, the main themes of The Bear is cooking. So we did a cooking challenge 
our self outtake went against another film platform called Small Time Credits and we literally went on a face off cooking a dish that is featured on the beer. Maz and Aladdin faced Kem and Hashi and it was a very fun watch, a very fun game. It was a hot day as well. We it did this outside, day. it was scorching uh, Yeah, it was a very hot day for, mm -hmm. for London as well. I think it was a heat wave going on during that period. But we have the full video out now on YouTube, so do check it out. But briefly talking about Maz, because if you've watched it, I won't give a spoiler on who won, but I can say that Maz was locked in. <laughs> you see, I'm from around the ways. <laughs> I'm leaving here. She so. locked in. At one point, it was normal banter and jokes. It's like, yeah, I just need to cook right now. <laughs> like, Aladdin, Aladdin was trying to, like, put his two cents in, and I was like, okay, like, relax. Relax, this is Scott. <laughs> let's, let's not play games. I, I'm coming here to play because you know what, right? I go home, my mum's like, I don't know if you can cook. Babe, anyone can cook. Ratatouille thing. You know <laughs> what I mean? She off the spirit, literally, you heard the ratatouille in her head talking to her. It's like, lock in. <laughs> Rene, anyone can cook. And she locked in, but yeah. did they make her win? We don't, we don't know. know. You have to see we the video of the phone yeah. back and see what happened. But yeah, yeah. ratatouille, it says 17. Speaking years. of ratatouille and cooking <laughs> and all of that, okay. have you seen the bet? <laughs> Don't laugh! It's so it funny. was so I'm, good! I'm, 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 it was I'm, actually I'm, I'm, so good! I'm, I'm, that was <laughs> such a good segue. I'm so proud of myself. I'm always trying to figure out where Victory she goes. Victory sip. Every time Maz does a cutaway, I'm trying to figure out where she's taking this. And I'm like, okay, oh, shit, okay, she went there with it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> but I have to laugh because I don't know how, how else to react to it. But yes, I have been watching The Bear. The full season of season three is now out now on Disney Plus. And if you're from America, it's on Hulu. And I have watched all the way up to, what I made sure to do, I watched up to Ayo's um, director debut episode. So I made sure to watch that. Napkins. So that's, that's the latest episode. That's the last episode I watched. Napkins. Yeah. Um, for all you people that are posting stuff from the bear already on oh, TikTok. Oh, bad you vibes. Bad jog vibes. on. Bad vibes, because bad now vibes. I'm having to pop. You have to rush, you have to rush watch it now, isn't it? I'm not enjoying this right now. <laughs> it's, it's too quick. It's too quick. That's why. I, that's why I hate that it's being released all in one go. Like I'm not. I'm not really enjoying the experience Jimmy, watching the show. How am I supposed to have Hot Girl Summer, all these film <laughs> stuff, and then I have to now fight people doing spoilers, doing on, TikTok. spoilers on TikTok? Relax. Sit down. Drink a Relax. beverage. Relax. If you really want to have a discourse about it, go on fucking X like normal people. <laughs> Please, thank you. Oh. Jesus Christ. And then make it private so no one else can see it. Yeah, literally just got. But they want to. They want to spoil it for everyone. For, you're ruining it. Read reason. my lips. You're ruining it. It's, it's, it's so jarring. That's why I hate the fact they pull it out in one go. But I've seen yeah. that saying. It's just locked into. But I ain't glad. I've watched it episode six. What did you think of Ayo's directorial debut? I love that her episode. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't remember the character's name. But I liked that. It was like Tina. a flashback of Tina's. How she joined the, um, the beef um, shop. How she joined working there. I really liked that. That was it. It was kind was of like her... Richie's yeah, moment. I love that it was like, those type of episodes. It was, it's, it's what I'm really enjoying about the bear is that it's giving that evolution of each character. I know, yeah, everyone has everyone their own has moment. their own story, and yeah. you're gonna find it out a bit more. Like I'm not gonna spoil it, but there's yeah. another character that you don't even really realize that they even had a little side story, oh, and it's just like that. it's just like in a such a short like in a Tarantino way where it's just like a, a small casual conversation oh, that, I love that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, even speaking of like Tina's episode, I love that she had this like a sit down conversation with Mike with Michael. Mikey. I know yeah. just like I love the dialogue they were having each other. You got it just seems so real. You learn a lot about Michael and how he treats the restaurant. Like he didn't care about he even pretty much liked the job. But I think he, his whole thing was just he loved the people and that's what kept him working there. And it was good to see like Tina's backstory on how she came to work there and how Mikey yeah. even like Recruiting because they they kind of like talked about it but like they never went into detail about how Mikey even got the beef. Yeah, that as well. Yeah, yeah. finding out that was just the father just being a dead dad. <laughs> yeah, it's actually just like this Spoilers, business is fucked up. Sorry, I messed up this business. I mean, to be fair, Bye. he did. He did actually. It was discussed earlier on seasons that he is just a deadbeat dad. Yeah, pretty um, much. So it was quite interesting. 
um, this season, we're probably doing a lot of spoilers, so this is going to be spoilers on, spoilers, on the bear, spoilers, season three. Well, at least um, to episode six, because I haven't uh, seen past episode six. Let me see what episode I'm on. I'm so sorry. No, no worries. You can talk while so, you're So, like, while watching um, this season, I, I was... I really enjoyed the first episode. It was very bizarre opening episode. So this season's taking, um, it's starting off from the effects that took place in last season, the last episode of season two. Obviously, Carmen had like a whole breakdown. He he shouted the hell out at Richie. Um, I can't remember his girlfriend's name at the time, but he literally said probably the meanest stuff he could probably say to your girlfriend without realizing he was talking to his girlfriend because he was locked into a cupboard. And in this episode, season three, episode one, you're seeing the effects of him literally breaking away and realising that he needs to be better. So he goes off on his cooking journey and literally goes to different countries, New York. No, but isn't that just like the prequel of what? Because you know how he like yeah. was away from Chicago for ages. Yeah. Oh, so you're saying that is, was a prequel to that? That was, oh, it was, so it was it telling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry to jump in like that and ruin your bubble, but because it was it was it was telling his story of how he met like oh Terry that's why man was there in it and how I he met seen him again. Walter. Yeah, it was it was like that's why his you get that bit at the at the end as well where um, his sister gives him money yeah. because it's him going okay like now I need to go and, oh, and leave Chicago and then he you're he seeing how he develops and then like how the last restaurant he was in which was in New York yeah how that's affected his management skills in the kitchen which yeah we're the now, labeling which we're too. now seeing yeah in this season yeah that's how I've interpreted yeah I think you actually know you're right because it actually when you said that it makes it makes more, the most sense in the world because you're talking to your sister and giving him money I'm like why does he need to give her money for like I thought you're kind of you're, you're kind of yeah, financially well, good aren't you just, from, no, but like, you know, big sisters is always love. Yeah, they always love that. Yeah, yeah. Know you know about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the last child. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that that was that was dope because it wasn't much dialogue. There was a lot of music playing for it. Some bits were up, some I bits were found, down. I found that it was. I I'm really enjoying the moments of silence in film and TV. At yeah, the yeah. I really, I really because it holds a lot more weight. Hundreds of it speaks louder volumes than yeah. the natural noise itself. So sometimes it would just, it would have music and then it would just slowly like go into a crescendo and then it would yeah. just be pure silence. And I love cooking. So this, I see cooking as a form of art and I feel like watching this, this first episode just felt like seeing like an artist, it felt like a painter and a canvas because the way he was plucking like little bits of, um, of a flower mm -hmm. and one was like, do it faster, but but do it, like better mm -hmm. <laughs> and like just seeing yes, that sir. and just hearing like little violins playing oh my gosh this was it was just beautiful to watch it, it and was... that was probably the most beautiful thing from the season i've seen so far because yeah. after that stress i think <laughs> complete stress the segment from part one into part two it was like a very powerful thing where you were seeing the process of growing as a, an artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Having to go into different mediums or different restaurants in this case. Yeah. Understanding yeah. what's your style, yeah. what works for you. And then because of the impact of his last place, that's impacted how he sees Everything his expression of what it needs to be. But it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. Um, but I don't think he's fully understood that yet. That it doesn't have to be that way. Because next... The season progresses with him saying, we need a Michelin star. And for us to get a Michelin star, we have to do this. And he's he made a list called non-negotiables. Yeah. And I think that's when you he see Sydney then go into her bubble a bit more. Yeah. And you see, which I've, I personally have related with as a content creator myself, being like, you get to a point where you're, you're getting better at your craft. But you think, is this enough? Yeah. Can I really do something out of it? Can I really yeah. express myself in this situation? Yeah. Can I build myself out of it? And that reality of doubt that artists go through is very raw and real. And you don't have to be a creative person to deal with that. Yeah. Everyone has some form of imposter syndrome. Yeah. Definitely. 
I think that's definitely what she's been going through. And from what I've seen so far, it looks like she's going to have a moment where she breaks out and, like, either cuts, cuts out the hell out of Kami or, like, takes full control of things. Because from what I'm watching so far, of course, um, Kami has, has offered her um, part ownership of the restaurant and she sent her, like, documents to sign, but she has not signed it as of yet. And I think like there's going to be a moment where she either decides to sign it or move on to another restaurant because the environment she's working in is not the best. I can't remember what episode it was, but there's a moment where they, obviously Carmen now wants to get Michelin star, so he's stating that we need to do a different meal every day. And that is bringing a lot of complication financially, is hurting them, because I like how they touch on different, terms of the, different the, the ingredients. economy as The well. computer. Yeah, the computer guy. So the computer. guy in the computer that has to <laughs> make sure everything's going where he needs to go. No, no, it's not the, compu the computer guy. He's called the yeah. computer. <laughs> yeah, his name's computer. <laughs> <laughs> he said, nah, well, uh, bruv, I'm just an algorithm. Literally, and the way he talks is pretty much like so. Yeah. yeah. Until, until, until his sister had to cuss him the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I need to stop. I can't help it. <laughs> I can't stop. South help. London, stand up. <laughs> um, oh, God. So, yes, yeah, the thing is, Kami and Richie's relationship is starting to get annoying to me because it's just not, it's not progressive. It's not progressing anything because... They're arguing so much. I can't remember what episode it was, but the episode where they're literally just going through the days and there's back-to-back -back arguments. Obviously, Richie doesn't like the new order of things, especially doing a new menu every day. And it's taking effect with everyone in terms of remembering the, the ingredients, remembering the, what to cook, and obviously dealing with customers. Some people are allergic to certain things. Some people um, want things done a, a different way. And obviously, Richie wants to accommodate the customer the chef wants to accommodate the meal. Yeah. And the fiction there is literally what I'm experiencing in these, um, these last, um, in these six episodes that I have watched. But you know what's really interesting was that, oh, I, I don't know if I can say this because I don't know is what episode spoiler? I don't know. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> um, but there's, there's a slight change that happens yeah. that is not necessarily supervised by a particular individual but it goes through and it shows another person's talent. And it's a, just an interesting take on what happens when you're trying to mm. push against the grain. And um, what is Kami's sister's name again? I don't know, you know. It's not Claire. I think it is Claire. Is it Claire? It's kind of a generic <clears throat> white person name. Um, we're gonna stop right there. <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, Natalie. I have to get back. So, um, Natalie, she uh, says to, to um, Kami, not every day is going to be perfect. Yeah, I've seen that bit, yeah. Because um, that's in the first episode. Yeah, yeah but she, she released. <laughs> yeah, true. Fair enough, same. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> you should check out this uh, TV scholars. They're really good on Instagram. <laughs> they get really good quotables. So. <laughs> Yeah, Shout but like, to yeah, check them out. So they, she says, not every day is going to be perfect, and I think there's weight to hearing that in Kami's situation, but there's weight to hearing that for the viewers. Okay. And yeah. I think that's why people connect with the bear so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it kind of shows you what you. This is what success actually looks like. Yeah. And it's not this consistent linear progress. There's moments of regression. There's moments of doubt. Yeah. There's moments of this and that. Not every day is going to be perfect, but you've yeah. got to make every second count. Yeah. And that's, and that's literally how they live by it. I, bruv, this, the stress they go through the show is, is very uncomfortable watching, but also very entertaining at, at, at the same time. Um, seeing that you've seen pretty much majority of the episodes now, um, where do you feel the story's heading? Um, I still have like three episodes, but I think it continues to have that sense of healing. Yeah. That that tone of healing. Each character is healing. Each character is trying to push past their past. Yeah. They're trying to push against the grain of their past and realize that like it is. Um, okay, well, it's getting, it's getting like a little therapy session for me. <laughs> but it's like, um, 
you you go through a certain emotion kind of like you're on a wave mm. you like you're literally in the sea and you're on a wave you're going through the emotions but don't let those emotions overwhelm you like Kami did yeah. because it will drag you to the shore and pull yeah. you back yeah um and you're seeing that in each character and i think that's that's we're getting to that point where they're learning whether or not they're going to let these emotions pull them back in the same way that it has done with Kami yeah. from the end of season 2 yeah yeah cool how do you feel about this season compared to the others i think that this season isn't as uplifting as the last one but this season is a lot more real okay yeah i think that when when especially when we get films that are, or tv shows that are produced by hollywood yeah we always get this like i mean apart from stuff like madman it's like still like oh it's kind of like a happy ending and it's a little bit rose tinted yeah, and yeah. you're still this this this, this had this had more of a like a european feel for an american tv show yeah 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 i mean i'm mean, I mean, feeling that uh, compared to the other two to me it's not the best but like you said i think this one's more narrowed down into certain characters and more real with not only with themselves but the nature of the world because there's certain like hints of like touching on the fact that the climate's different cost of living like it really gets into the financial side of each of the in individual characters working in a restaurant the the realness of the bills they have to pay for restaurants the food the understanding the nitty-gritty of what it takes to make a restaurant or make financially for everyone to make make money as well mm -hmm. and i like that, that element of it um i'm i am hoping that next season is the last season because I'm scared that if they drag on the seasons, that the show will lose its, its, its essence. Its, its essence of it. Yeah. Because I'm actually kind of upset that The Bear is even a really popular show. I, I loved it more when it was just like certain people. Oh, if you're you knew, such a you knew. hipster. I, I'm, I'm telling you. I, you're <laughs> such a hipster. I liked it before it was cool. I did. I, mean, I really did. And I enjoyed it a lot more when it was just like only a few people knew about it. Because I'm scared because it's so popular now that they may try to drag it out. But I know two, two of the actors, even three of them, even Richie, I can't remember his, his, um, his, his actual name. But Richie's character, they're all big superstars now. Like, he's going to be in Fantastic Four. I mean... Like, they're all bouncing off. Can we talk about Marcus's evolution from loiter squads? Yeah, 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 yeah. To getting... We have to talk Actors about Odd, um, Odd Future. Odd Future was made fun of being black nerds and just being like deemed as just like losers for being awkward, into awkward the black kids. Yeah, and now I think literally every single one of them are doing great in their in their field. They're doing a return, but we'll talk about that later. For that, like I have to give them the props because I think there was a picture of um, his name Lloyd. Mm -hmm. It was Lloyd, um, Tyler Crayer, pretty much of the, of the whole... Um, L Sweatshirt. Yeah, they yeah, were like all, there was a picture of them all like hugged together. Yeah, because they're doing, they're doing a, they're also having a reunion. Oh, is That's it? That's why I was like, we'll talk about oh, that later. Dope. I think, yeah. yeah, I think his evolution is amazing. Taco, all those individuals, yeah. they're all doing bits. It just goes to show that wherever you're into, don't let anyone deter you from being into it, bro. If you're, if you're into these nerdy things, Stay into it, like don't let anyone push you to feel like you shouldn't be, you shouldn't like it, or whatnot. Because down the line, it will come full circle. Because mm. black nerds up, baby. Oh, baby, <laughs> look at Issa Rae. Awkward, <laughs> awkward, awkward black girls. Come on, Jordan Peele. We up, baby. <laughs> the black nerds are kicking it. <laughs> you know um, what I'm saying? Quinter, Quinter, yeah, yeah Quinter. Quinter. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was missing names. He got money, <laughs> a large. Um, but yeah, I think the bear. This episode is about the individualness of the characters, yeah. but it's about the cohesion of the team. Yeah. There's a break in that, and that's why it feels really disjointed at the moment. Yeah. Because what grows together goes together. That's one of the quotes I'm showing it. What grows together goes together. Now, if you know, you know. But you, that's a very important quote from this season. I can't remember what episode I said that. Maybe I'm, I have not reached it yet. Or maybe I have. 
But yeah, The Bear Season 3 is out now. All episodes out now on Disney Plus and Hulu. Do check it out. Or if you haven't seen the, the other seasons, be sure do you do watch The Bear. It is a great show and it's worth watching. Um, shout out to AO, shout out to Jeremy L. White. Shout out to the gang. Shout out to the whole team, yeah. man. They did killing a phenomenal it. job killing it, killing in terms it. of... Once again. But please, next season, make it the last one, man. I don't want a season five. They'll, they'll, they'll flop it on season five. No, they won't. I'm, stop. I'm so, stop. I'm I so rebuke sure. it in the name of Jesus Christ. How, much time can we how see them dare argue? he do Think such blasphemy? It's about, a Sunday. I feel about the same thing about the boys. There's, there's going to be fatigue. How long can you see these people argue for? It's the Lord's Day and he's being blasphemous. <laughs> anyway, we're going to talk digress. about that. <laughs> Let's digress to another, another film or movie, I should say. Yeah. Um, A Quiet Place, Day One. Look, I want to say sorry. What happened? I want to say about? sorry. I want to take back a lot of things today. <laughs> I'm going to say it now. Like, guys, it, you're going to hear it in 4K. Yeah. I don't know how you can yeah, hear it in yeah, 4K, yeah. but you're going to hear it in high definition. High definition. High five. You're going you're gonna, to you high five. <laughs> you're going to see it in 4K. I was sceptical about watching this when we watched the trailer reaction. Junior, yeah. I know you're going to pull it up. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, I was sceptical about watching this. And I really liked it. Yeah. And I also would like to apologise about Joseph Quinn. My guy. My guy. Come um, on. Tell the, him. The PR. <laughs> tell him. Soldier boy, tell him. The PR has got to me. Um, do you want me to play the VN? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Shit. Yeah. Let's get it locked down. Um, you may she need... doubted. She doubted him. You may... you I was may... on his side from the very beginning. Since Stranger Things, he left. And I'm like, ah, oh, damn, they killed him. Spoiler alert, he died in, in Stranger Things. Now he's moved on. He's going to be in Fantastic Four. And he's going to be in Quiet Place Day 1. I was excited. I was like, yes, he did it. But Maz, she wasn't feeling it. <laughs> she was not feeling it. <laughs> this, is the, this is the take now. This is what she said after it's watching it. But I went to see A Quiet Place Day 1. The Joseph Quinn and PR in that film is mad. And he only is in a third of the film. <laughs> Well, like, two-thirds of the film. Nah, I'd say, like, a third. Bro, that PR is crazy. My guys. I, have to, I had to subtract my statements yes, about him being the human torch now. I'm, yes, in, I'm embarrassed. Yes, this Queen. is embarrassing. Yes, 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 yes. Shout out, Quinn, man. Shout out, Quinn. And there's a lot of people out there that felt the same way like Maz. You didn't believe him to be the human torch, but go watch Quiet Place Day 1 and it'll, it'll make you realise not only is he a sick actor, but he's got the charisma, bro. He's got the charisma. He's, got, he's he got that spores. He's got, the, he's got it there. He's got that split. And like I said, after, after um, off camera, I said to Maz, just wait for him to cut off his hair and just get a little bit of muscle. It's over. It's, it's over. It's finished. It's finished. He did, he did a really good job on this film. Um... Like you said, he's but not also, in the film that much. Yeah, he's not. But, like, I feel like Lupita and um, Joseph have great chemistry. But Yeah, really good. Phenomenal chemistry, honestly. Yeah. I, and I think that's due to Lupita, you know. I think she just knows how... She's. I was very sceptical about her being casted in this film just because I'm so used to the other previous... Um, quiet but she no, but she's a screen queen now. There's no, there's the no, thing. there's no way you can't. Like a lot of people are debating it. You can, you can comment below. You can discuss it. You can message it yeah. with us. That do you think that she's a sc screen queen? I personally think I at think this she, point I she, think she is. is. I think it was beautiful casting because she's perfect for this film because her facial expressions is so good. So for a film that requires no noise, we have to deal with their face and how they're reacting to things. She is so good at uh, body in motion and kind of conveying how she feels to the audience. And throughout this film, whenever she was sad, whenever she was um, in fear, I felt it. When she felt, in my skull. when she felt, when she was weak. Oh. Oh, when she was God. dying. Ah! When she was oh, weak. Oh yeah, spoilers, and she, it's probably a spoiler still. We've already said this. <laughs> okay, no. um, like when she was weak and she was she was in pain and her medicine was going. Yeah, you felt that. I was like, is this the same person? <laughs> is this the same? Because to see how she is in the red carpet to that. Yeah, yeah. She she's the most she's an excellent actor. I'm, I'm happy she got like main role for this film. Um, I hope this leads to more accolades and more like 
Um, I mean, she's an Aust- she's already an Oscar award winning queen. Yeah, but um, I feel like I mean, even with that, she quite, she like, kind of gets shelved a lot. Of no, times. I feel like it, it it's good to push her away from that because that I mean again it was a very traumatic role, but yeah. it's it was like I hate having to see another slave story and yeah, then, of course. and that being the only definition for the actress and she's she's really pushing herself in terms of boundaries. That's why I didn't want um Lily Gladstone to win an Oscar cuz I'm not really happy with actors winning for like trauma roles. Yeah. I mean, I mean technically I technically again in this one it is but like it was in way that you saw the character find empowerment because she'd gone through the stages of grief and accepted yeah, her reality. Yeah, that's why I, I love this film, The Quiet Place Day One, because we're, we're dealing with a character that is dealing with cancer. She, she's, so basically, it's, 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 it's horror with meaning. It's not just horror for the sake of horror. Yeah. In this case, it's horror dealing with death. Yeah, and living life. Yeah. Yeah. Death and living life because we've got Joseph Quinn's character which is scared about being alive. Yeah. And then you've got Lupita's character who's scared or like kind of uncomfortable at the idea of knowing that they're close to their own yeah. death. And like her whole arc is really like she just wants to go to her dad's place where he used to perform and get a slice of pizza. <laughs> That's all she wants to do during this like humongous like apocalyptic moment with aliens coming down and killing off people she's like i'm going to die regardless because i'm ill i've got cancer and i just want to see my dad's bar where he used to perform and eat a slice of pizza and that's literally all she wants to do and this is essentially the whole plot of the story and it is so well well done um quentin is not into like half of the film like towards the end but you're following, um, I don't know her name, the Peter's the character's name in this film, but you're just following her story and through it, you're just seeing someone that I don't even know, like, it's so bizarre because you normally when you deal with these, like, disaster films, you're dealing with someone that essentially wants to live. Yeah, and then in this case, you're her character it. doesn't... It doesn't have a name, does it? I don't think she even said her name in the film. No, they did. They did, okay. I'm, I'm certain they did. Um, you keep talking about yeah, it. But yeah, but her performance in it was just amazing to, to watch, to see her go from... I know it, I'm digressing from her character, but I do have to talk the fact that they decided to make a film that focused on sound and have it deal, have it be set in New York City, which is probably the, the loudest Samira. place ever. Shout out to Samira. In the loudest place ever. So the fact that they took this franchise, which is normally like dealt with like in the countryside and said, you know what, let's put it to a loud place in New York City um, was really good. Because really like on average, the just on a normal day, just walking through New York, yeah. they say this in the first scene, the average decibels is 90. That's nuts. They said that's a constant scream. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a way to start a film, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, she actually goes through this journey just like figuring out how to get to this place to get the pizza off. Um, she meets a lot of different people um, on her way. Um, one of the characters she meets, is his name there? This Eric. guy he never gets his credit, bro. Not Eric. Oh, mm. him. Henry. How do you say his name? Henry. I don't know uh, his, his da, actual name. The Dijomon. Dijomon? Oh, okay. Such a shame, bro. This guy is in every he, film. No, no, no. I, like, there, was a, there, was, there, was, there was a point where he wasn't in films and I was worried. <laughs> because, yeah, like, yeah. he isn't, like, his portrayal in the first gladiators film was oh shit he was in gladiators crazy he's been he's been around for he's time crazy. this guy does not age he looks the same no i know he was he was also like deep he was in kingsman the king's oh, men yeah, yeah, yeah. the first one yeah, the prequel one yeah, yeah, yeah bro like give my guy his accolades like bro. i feel like a lot of people forget like how incredibly talented we need to start a union for him bro yeah. because i there's an article this recently. is the fan club join the fan club 100 percent. because there, there was an article that came out a month ago where he's complaining about about payment he doesn't get paid as enough what happened what okay oh, this is the spoiler scene that scene where he where the guy was like we're gonna die oh, we're gonna die and then he had to kill him he actually had to kill him day. in front of his son because I, like that guy just needed to shut the fuck I actually up hate people when they panic too much bruv Bruv, like, your panicking is going to get us killed. 
So this is the scene where they're on the rooftop and it, um, this is like the, the start of the, essentially I would say, alien invasion. Yeah, so like, like more of the aliens are dropping down yeah. from the sky as, and, and the door is wide open and they're on the roof. Yeah. His son is around the corner, Yeah. like by at the bottom of the stairs and this guy is seeing all the aliens come and he's like, oh, oh, we're going to die. And he's like, bro, shut the fuck up. Real. Shut the fuck up. And then he's like trying to move his hand away from his so mouth. So he can to scream, yeah. bro, they dumb. And like they've already discovered that the monsters react to noise. But this guy, he has it in his soul that he feels like, I have to scream this. Bro, just, just go downstairs. Just shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. And unfortunately, he has to kill him. Well, he didn't mean to kill him. He didn't him. mean he to kill him. He just bashed his head to be quiet, but he maybe did it too strong. But obviously, bro, no, no, like, if you like, make you're noise, so you're going to die. Like, no. I'm terrified right now. Like, be quiet. It wasn't even, like, he, he basically smoth, he smothered him. Yeah, That's what happened. And unfortunately, his kids saw it and it was a very... Yeah, but, like, but at the same time, if he didn't do it, his kid was going to die. Yeah, so. so he had to go with him. Yeah, like, that was, that was like... There were so much moments of people just doing unless. Like, there was a bit where they were all walking and then there was, like, a, like a huge crowd of people walking in the same direction. I was thinking to myself, I'm not walking in New York. There's no way I'm walking with a huge crowded crowd of no, New Yorkers. No, but she told the kids that she found, she was like, go with them. Yeah, she's like, cut, bruv. <laughs> she's like, I'm going to get a slice of pizza, bruv. Would you go with that crowd of people no. knowing that the monsters wrapped to noise? It only takes one person to step on the wrong thing and they're all off. And then while they're walking, it happened anyway. While you're walking, you see where the aliens just go down the building and say, Swear, food. <laughs> <laughs> These monsters, because I'm not sure you've seen the other. The other two. De they're called Death Angels. By death the way. They're called Death Angels. Yeah. Oh, so these Death Angels. I did other... my research this time, guys. <laughs> in part one and part two, you're normally dealing with one or two of them because they're in the countryside. And obviously, these are days later. This, like, I think they say it's like 500 days of the actual alien invasion. So everyone's like experienced, they know how to deal with them. So you're dealing with one or two of them. This one, you're dealing with actual herds of them. So you're seeing like when there's a noise go, when you hear a noise, you just hear them go as a huge herd just running through to that noise, like destroy no, everything the, the, in the way. The worst one was like, so they would have like helicopters to say, oh, everyone yeah. has to go down south to the harbour and, and then we'll pick you there. They can't swim. This is yeah, the big yeah, thing. They can't yeah. swim. Yeah, yeah. So if you go there, we'll pick you up and then we'll... Um, uh, will will save you or whatever and you'll like be free yeah but every time a helicopter came they Whoa. lost their <laughs> ish it was like them man were having a rage Trust. they were trying to they climb up the building trying to jump up trying to grab that thing <laughs> trying to grab the helicopter and it's like there's no humans in there right? yeah <laughs> i hope not Bro. They're both the humans in their flying. So, no, 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 no. You've got, you've got to use drones. You've got to use drones <laughs> at that point. It. Freaking no. But this was, it was very interesting to see in the early days of The Quiet Place. Um, we do have to talk about the main star, the superstar of Frodo. this whole film. The cat. Yes. Yeah, Frodo. The cat. Um, so Frodo was actually played by two cats. Yeah. Look, guys, I'm telling you, I actually did my research today. Like, <laughs> um... I sent the picture in the chat, <laughs> so drop a, it. You sent a picture of, of the I cat. Can't. So the cat follows our main character, played um, played by Lupa. Um, Samira. Samira. She's actually... And this um, is our pet cat. And no, this cat... It's an emotional support cat. That's what she says. No, but <laughs> no, it's a woman with cancer. You can't not give her an emotional I mean, you support. You can't argue that it's a support cat. But I don't think it's a support cat. I think it's just, Bruv, a, it's just a cat. the cat was able to be unleashed. That's an emotional support cat. <laughs> don't, don't even... The cat... She was okay. walking the cat on a leash. You got me. Like, a lot of people can do that, but, like, that's... I'm telling you, that's a trained cat. Fair that enough. That cat... Fair enough. That Fair cat enough. was on business. It was on business. I mean, it was and it wasn't. Its actions could have got them killed, but it also brought them together. So... <laughs> no, it did a bit of both. It saved their lives in some... Yeah. In one way or another. So, throughout the film, I was waiting to see... Um, Jonathan's character played by Eric, um, Jonathan's character named Eric. And Joseph. Joseph. Joseph's character said Jonathan. So Joseph, I was waiting to see him pop up in the film. I was waiting patiently for him to come up, but he didn't. But Lupe, um, her, her cat went off and found him and dragged him in. So literally bringing him together, this cat. And this cat either helped him at moments or made things incredibly worse. But it was just flowing around doing its thing. And it was so beautiful to see, like, end of the world and you're seeing this cat just be a be cat. Be a cat. Like, 
just be a cat. Like, it stopped licking random stuff and yeah. it was alien glue. Yeah. Like, alien goo. And you're just like, bro, like, come on. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so, like, I feel like Schnitzel and Nico did a phenomenal job as... Yeah. Um, as Frodo. Yeah. I like the fact that the cat was called Frodo because Frodo literally had a whole side quest yeah. <laughs> the whole film. Shout out to Lord of the Rings. Yeah. <laughs> For real. Frodo Baggins, my no, guy. I, I love that little element of it. Um, I think it added to the film. It kind of made the film, uh, to be fair. And I think it was, yeah. Journey. And I think like... It's such a beautiful cat as well. Holo- yeah, very beautiful. Like, I think I want a cat. Yeah, I think I want a cat as well. I don't even like cats like that. I was yeah. watching this film, I was like, damn, I think I want a cat. I really want a cat. I wanted a cat and pizza. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah like, I, I did want I, wanted, I, want, I wanted to get a slice yeah, of pizza like, after yeah. watching the film. No, I mean, and, but then, but then <laughs> I didn't late. have it immediately afterwards. So when I did have the pizza, which was yesterday, it felt so good. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, it made yeah, me think yeah. about the scene. So there's a scene where they're sat in the bar that her dad used to play the piano. Yeah. And uh, Joseph Quinn's character, Eric uh, provides Samira with a pizza slice because yeah. that's all she wanted. And the euphoria you see with, on that first bite. Yeah. Oh my. It, it looked good. God. It looked good until she went, I don't realize that's some soft ass, cold ass pizza. <laughs> yeah, but like at the same time, deep it, like you've seen people. Dying. Yeah, yeah. That piece, no, to them, that piece of, must have been fire. Oh, no, it was like pulling strings and yeah. everything. So for me, that. when I had my first pizza slice, it was probably the same experience with because like I'd just come out from a night out and it was yeah. slightly cold. <laughs> so, but like I like bit into it. Night out like, pizza oh. is, the, is the one. <laughs> it tasted so good <laughs> that gooey goodness. and it made me think of a, a quiet place of day yeah. one yeah there's a lot of great elements in this film man um i really enjoyed it i, I had a blast watching it um for me because i have seen the other two um what only thing i didn't like is that i thought i would get more information about the monsters so in part two you already, you found out that they they can't deal with water and so in this in this one that water is a huge element of it but i would love to learn a little bit more about the monsters whether it's because you already know how to kill them now. In part two, you learn how to kill them. I don't know. Any additional information about the monsters would have been good. Nonetheless, I think it's a great prequel to a film. A lot of times, films do horrible when you do a prequel. I've, I d- like, just want to put it out there. I've never seen the other two. Yeah. <laughs> well, shit, you haven't I seen have, the other two. You know this, because I don't <laughs> like horror films, guys. So how do you feel seeing it? As, would you, is it give you any interest to watch the other two, then? I, I know it's going to be like I I already yeah. know in my, in the back of my head it's very different but like I genuinely didn't expect to like it so much <laughs> yeah. like guys I'm a pussy hole I I don't like horror films <laughs> I'm a scaredy cat I'm yeah. a scaredy cat look at the, it's so funny the cat's just sitting there shout out to the cat um, yeah Ooh, that's a, Frodo Frodo is actually our special guest today <laughs> shout out shout out yeah um, yeah. Like, I, I, I really didn't expect myself to like it so much. I think it's worth watching the other two, because if you can handle day one, the other two is pretty much the same element, but the, I guess the monster is more of the theme. Because I think day one, the monster is not the theme of, of, of the film. I mean, I was, like, really jumpy. Oh, yeah, there were some jumpy moments in this. There, I there was, there, I, like, I jumped a lot watching no, this film. No, the one of, I was actually questioning, bro, do, I, what, do I watch horror? Bro, I watch horror. Why am I jumping so much? I <laughs> I was like, it was like giving, you know, when you were little and you'd watch Doctor Who and yeah. there was like a Dalek or that, a- that angel statue come up yeah. and you were watching it from behind the sofa. Yeah. I was doing that in the cinema but you just, at my big age. You just be chilling. Like, ah, like, fuck. So just jump up. Sometimes it'd just be the cat. I'd be like, it, oh, oh shit. Yeah. The cat would just jump up. Oh shit, the cat. I think the worst part was that when, so the cat ends up licking this goo and it ends up being in basically oh, the my, nest the where nest all the deaf it. angels are. Yeah. And um, at one point, the monster's looking at um, Joseph Quinn's character, Eric, right in the face. But obviously yeah. he can't see. It's just waiting for sound. Yeah. And it opens its mouth wide that you could see its heart yeah. beating. Boom. Boom, boom. I know in his mind he'll speak. Boom. Eric's like, man, why did I come for this dumbass cat, bro? Why would the cat put me into? Why would me this bullshit? <laughs> that cat had him going through a mass list. <laughs> then the underwater scene was mad. The the scene with the briefcase was pretty good. 
when they were going through the door and the briefcase was there and it was stuck. My heart was going, and there were so many of them running mm -mm. through. Oh. There was, and there was no way, like, each direction, they were coming from everywhere. 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 It was giving Canary Wolf, though. <laughs> you know, it didn't look like Canary Wolf. It was giving Canary Wolf. <laughs> Shout out to London no. that no. <laughs> no, because I had to turn around. It's like, it's I, Canary I, Wolf. I, I had to be like, is it me or does it remind you of Canary Wolf? Like, what's going on? Do you think if you was in a quiet place, you survive based on the fact that you can't make noise? My big mouth. <laughs> So what do you do? You just hop out. Say, <laughs> get out you know, dinner. You know, uh, you know, you know. <laughs> just walk out. Get out. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I, yummy. I, I, I would play that Kate Trinada boiler room set that everybody loves and at least go and have a good time. You know what I mean? <laughs> if I'm going, I'm going with a good time. How much of the song do you think going to hear before they kill you? No, at, at least like, at least get to like the, my favourite part, you know. Just want to be a girl. That's fine. Oh shit, that's why they kill you. That yeah. is hilarious. Okay. I'll survive still, I'll be my quiet. I'm a quiet person still. <laughs> I'll be I'll be calm. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Send the send the host of the podcast. <laughs> just can't do no podcast no more. <laughs> just will be visuals. Or <laughs> just turn into a blog. <laughs> No, 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 not even the dyslexic person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> but yeah, Quiet Place is out there at the cinemas. Do check it out. I recommend everyone to watch it. Even if you don't like horror. Because it's if not you like too cats, much of a horror. Watch it. It's not, it's not too much of a monster film. And that's what makes it so great. And I think it's worth giving it a watch. It's more of an emotional one. Like... Yeah, definitely more from oh, a roller coaster. That... Oh, beautiful ending. What was that? It's neon. It's a new dawn. Oh. It's a new day. My days. It's a new life beautiful, for beautiful. me. Yeah, that was, that was beautiful. Yeah. And your song would be huh? Kitchen Arthur. That's, that's what could be you. For you. You're yeah, going to do yeah, that. Yeah, that, that, that would be Kitchen Arthur. So Boiler take, room set. You take out the, the wire <laughs> when it comes to this bit. It was just like... Pata, pata, pata. <laughs> <laughs> and you start dancing like it's a musical. <laughs> Might as well, like you know the two the two girls from um, was it Rogue and yeah. and um, and, and um, Thingy and Bob from X Men where they're doing the white god. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be me. I might as well do it. I might as well do it. Like, come on, it looks fun as well. It does look so, fun. So have a blast. Yeah. If I'm going, I'm gonna have a good time. Yeah, man. Well, I hear it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Frodo still. Shout out to Frodo. Um, Shout out to Schnitzel Quiet Place. and Nico, you did a phenomenal job. And shout out to, what's he, jo jo Joseph? Joseph's, Joseph Quinn. Shout out to Joseph Quinn. Lupita I always, believed, I always believed in you. And shout out to Lupita. And Lupita. Alex Wolf from the Naked no, Wolf you, Brothers. I like Alex Wolf, you know. Yeah. He's in Her Heronity. Her yeah. Yeah, that I really like. I knew, I knew you were going to mention yeah. that. That's your <laughs> that, That's my, one of my favourite horrors. That's such your favourite. That's film. my favourite horror film. One of my favourite horror films. But yeah, shout out to the cast members. Did a great job. I love to see each one of these guys as their career progress and goes further on. But be sure to check it out. Um, I think that's everything we've got. I think we can do outtakes, you know. You have to go first. I just put a suit in my mouth. <laughs> So we're going to go digress and talk about outtakes and talk about the show. Not outtakes, intakes. Talk about intakes, talk about the movies and stuff that I've been watching. Um, one movie I've been watching, um, Kind of Kindness, which is a... He's a Greek director, Yusuf. Yusuf. Mm -hmm. um, I watched that film... It's Joseph, by the way. Film. Joseph? Yusuf is Joseph. Oh, is it? Okay, fair enough. You're not saying it every day. Translation. <laughs> Translation. So I watched, I watched this film um, the other day in the cinema. It features um, Jesse Pink. Jesse. What's his name? What's his surname? Bro. Jesse Pims, Emma Stone, William and Defoe, and one or two actors as well. And it is a anthology, somewhat like um, Black Mirror, where they have three stories in this one film. And. If you've seen any of Yosef's films in the past, you will know that he has a particular style. Um, his most known one as of recent is Poor Things featuring Emma Stone, which won a lot of awards. Um, his first film, which I think is his the first favorite. film, is Fate Favourite is another big mm -hmm. one. I think it's the first one he done with Emma Stone. 
um, his most wasn't classic that, wasn't one. Wasn't also the one that um, Olivia Colman got her, yes. her, 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 yes. her Oscar for? Yes, she did. So, yeah, he's, he's done some very powerful he, he, stuff for he does female some actor stuff. stuff. For, 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 female act, for, for female actors, sorry. Yeah, that's um, true, in true. terms In terms of also seeing that it's a male director as well. It's yeah, quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. And it seems like he's done actually a lot of films. He's done The Scar of the Deer, The Lobster. He did The Lobster? Yeah, he did The Lobster. I see some as well. That's my film. Yeah. That's my I film. I he's done Lobster. We have to fact check that one. But I'm pretty sure he did Lobster. That is, that is, that's pretty much his bag as well. Actually, he did The Lobster. I remember seeing a video talking about it as well. And he's most, I think his classic, his cult classic one is Dog Tooth, which I watched as, as part of my movie challenge, which was a very, very uncomfortable watch. And he seemed to do very surreal movies that touch on life and different elements of people, but does it in such a dramatic and surreal way where it's, it's definitely touching on a set topic, but it's born is is brought Blown out of proportion. Way out of proportion. Out of proportion. So for it's... kind of the kindness, it's three stories, but the most it's divorce, the, right? The divorce whole, by the, the divorce. Whole, not really divorce. The whole element is just people serving others, even though it hurts them. And in each story, someone is serving someone or helping someone, and it's destroying them. And it, I, mm, I can, I can, I'll do a quick spoiler and just explain each story. And the first story, divorce by is um, Jesse's character. For years, he's been working for William Dafoe, and William Dafoe is like a rich tycoon. And literally, William Dafoe plans his whole day. He says, at 10 a.m., you do this, 11 a.m., you do that. And he's been doing that for years. So much so that he tells him when to have sex with his wife. He tells, he's told him, your wife cannot have a child. And he's been tricking his wife, making her think that she is unable to have a child. When really and truly, he's been slipping pills in her in a in her drinks and making her have like abortions without a miscarriage without even realizing dark as hell and he has to do has to do he has to do a task where he has to kill someone and he doesn't want to do it and because he doesn't want to do it he gets fired from this job and in this story you just see him trying to get his job back because he realized he really needs this guy and it is so bizarre that typical use of type of style and it was very interesting to watch and that's the first story. The second story, and by the way, each of these characters are in each of the stories, but they play different roles. So it's like an apology, same cast members, just different story and different characters, and it just switch, switch up. So the second story is Emma Stone's character is taken away, not taken away, she goes, she's like a environment, she's like, she works, she's here to help make the world a better place, and she goes on this trip, and she is missing and while she's missing Jesse's character is a police officer is her, is her husband and he's just dealing with the fact that she's gone but she comes back but she's different her foot is bigger than it used to be but she's more submissive and she will do anything for her husband so much so that he he believes that she's an alien and he starts testing how much she will do stuff for him that so much so that he stops eating and she said I'll cook you anything da -da -da. he says okay I want you to cut off your finger and cook that for me. What in the army hammer is this? And then she does that. What and in the army hammer is this? Yeah, and then that story continues from there. Mm -mm. Then the first story, <laughs> which is the final story, is Emma Stone's part of a cult and they're trying to find like this girl that has the, the power to bring people back from the dead. And But she's left her wife, left her husband and her, and her child. And William Dafoe is the leader of this cult. And yeah. But the thing is, each of these stories are like an hour long. And that's why I'm not too happy with Three this Three hour film? I don't have, I don't have an And this is someone that really likes long films. Because it's three different stories, it's very, it take, it's a lot for you to deal with. And especially with the topics that I just said, it's a lot for you to take in. No. Like, I'm still thinking about, I'm still thinking story one, and you're showing me story two. I'm still trying to take in that in. Like, I do like cults and stuff, but, like, <laughs> you can't. No, like, I, I, what, you know, one? no, no, no. Like, you know, like, how you just, like, yeah. find you have certain things that you yeah. hyper-focus on. Yeah. But, like, I feel like this is a bit too much. I would have loved if there was a break <laughs> in between, like, intermission. Can we have an in interval, between. please? <laughs> yes, honestly. Um, I, I did enjoy each of the stories. As you, It was hard to understand what was going on. I had to watch, like, a... 
YouTube explain video oh, to, no, to understand no, what, what no, the hell is going on. No. So I was I, I won't say I was disappointed because that's his style. I was just it was just a lot to take in. It was obviously because it's three different stories. It was anticlimactic because there's no like real end to, to the film because it's you're just watching three different stories. But if you love his films, watch it a hundred percent. Because if you love his films, you're gonna love this film, and I think that's why it was rated um the highest film of this year. Yeah, one of the best films of this year. Because if you love him, you love this film. I'm not the biggest fan of him per se. I did like poor things. I did like. Actually, I do like a lot of these. You like the lobster. I just didn't like Dogtooth. And I think I got the same feeling when I watched Dogtooth when I watched this. It was just very uncomfortable to watch. And if that's but what But you I'm know what? With... It's quite interesting because, like, I mean, I just went on my letterbox and my friend, who's really into some of his other stuff, gave, him, gave it two stars. Two stars? Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, it's three different stories. And I think that's what hurts... The film. Three hours? Nah, I don't and have three don't different have stories. Capacity, three hours. Oh, it, was a, it was a lot. But if you like his stuff, I say it's worth watching. I think that's even why I like The Quiet Place more. Yeah. It wasn't that long. Oh, very short. I loved it. Minutes. Beautiful. Very, very you well know, paced. If you're, well able, paced if, you're well. able, if you're able to tell a story, all that detailing, such a short period, you're great. Yeah. But I do have to shout out Jesse, though. I'm really happy that he got a lead role. He doesn't normally get lead, ro- lead roles. He normally just gets thrown in and does really good and then dips out. Um, if you love him, you love his work, I think watch it because he deserves He was actually athletes. awarded for his performance in this film at Cannes Festival. Is it? I'm happy yeah. for him. He did really well. Yeah. He did really, really well. Emma Stone, did, everyone did good, but Jesse stood out in each of those stories. That no, I and then, uh, if you definitely feel yeah. like that's why he And if it. you guys are watching, have watched the film, do let me know who and what and why is RF, RMF, RMF, what is that? Who is that? What, what, what does that mean to me? That symbol was shown in each of the stories. There's a character that wore a t shirt that said RMF. And each title of the story <coughs> was like RM, RMF eats a sandwich. RMF is flying. Who is he? What is he? What does it stand for? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you. That's my intakes. Um, okay, but. <laughs> it's not taken. Okay. I don't, I don't know. Oh, I started watching Jujutsu Kaisen. Oh, last season? No, the, the first, right. Like, like I'm saying, I've just oh, started watching. Oh, how, how you, what are you saying? Fire, innit? Yeah, that's a bit of me still, yeah, bitch. Fire, that's fire, fire. Mac, you were fucking right. Because <laughs> Mac said to me, oh, Mads, you're going to learn Jujutsu Kaisen. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Damn. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get into it eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll get into that eventually. Like, Because I have... Like you, I have phases where I want to watch anime. Yeah, yeah, so. um, Normally, I don't know why. When, when I'm kind of going for it. <laughs> I love watching anime. Because <laughs> I think the characters are going through it worse. Yeah. So then you're just like, oh, it's not that deep now. Like, yeah. What I'm dealing with is never that deep. Um, and yeah, like, it just, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting storyline. Um these 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 animes love to talk about curses a lot, man. Yeah, that's that's the whole bag. I think majority. Of, I think majority curses, of, curses, and religion. Yeah, I think majority of the animes I watch have curses involved with it, and I think that's just. I guess that's Japanese culture. I guess. Yeah. Like old folk tales talk about curses. And, and it's uh, also really interesting uh, for anyone that uh, Megan the Stallion fans out here. There was a few uh, anime references in her new album. Oh, yeah. She's and there a was a lot of stuff about how there's issues with her performing that stuff and her concerts because of Japan laws. Really? Um, yeah. It's a, it's a big thing. We'll deep dive into it when oh, I've fine. come back from watching Megan Thee Stallion. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Real hot girl she is. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So, JJK, super into that. Dope. Uh, a Quiet Place, the and um, The Bear. The Bear, yeah. yeah. I think um, in terms of that, I just haven't been watching too much stuff because I feel like I'm going to get square eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, there's been a lot. There's been a lot going on this yeah. week. Um, I'm, I think tomorrow I need to watch um, Supercell by Yeah, Ratman. I need to watch Supercell. Watch and good you know what's coming up next Somerset. week? Maxi. Let's go. Are we going? Are we going to be a cinema for it? Um. Oh well, we're gonna find out. Well, 
<laughs> we're going to find out. But Deeper Into Movies, which is a really cool podcast that we listen to, and yeah. they do loads of cool events at the Rio Cinema in Dalston. Um, they, I don't know if it's been announced yet. Oh, but let me check. Hold on. One moment. Do, 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 like do, a scare do, do, fest do, do, do. for that would be great. Do, 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 do. Sorry, I'm just you know, like yapper to the people. Watching that this. with like a group of like nineties horror fans because Maxi kind of gives that like eighties like like f- not thriller, um slasher type of movie. I think watching that with a group of people that's really into that niche will be a bag banger. And I think Real Cinemas really captures that type of audience. So we would have to check out with them, seeing that film. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be one of the top films of this year. I'm putting it out there now. I think, um, what's her name? Meth Goff. Mia Goff. Mia Goff. I think her performance is going to be incredible. I think the last two, she did an excellent job. I'm looking forward to see this list. They, they put a lot of big actors in this one as well. What do you mean? What do you mean? You've got um, Phil Collins, Lily Collins. Phil Collins' daughter is a scream queen. Yeah. Phil Collins' daughter. Emily is not in Paris. She's <laughs> screaming in LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's screaming in. LA. Em- Emily is nowhere in Paris, babe. She's screaming in LA. <laughs> she gone to LA. Detour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm looking forward to this film. Yeah. I think it's incredible. Wow, that was actually a really good, quiet scream. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> Keep that. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't see. Flip that. it and loop it. Fair enough. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll find out if if we do find out, and when we do, we let you know on socials all about it. But that's it for today's episode. I mean, I found it. Oh, but okay. it's, Shit. it's not. It's not. It says, "Here she comes." Mia Goff returns as Maxine, the final uh, final to Ti's trilogy, coming soon. So. Keep your eyes peeled on our socials so you can find out and you can join us with Outtake and Friends. Outtake and Friends. Yeah. But yeah, guys, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. This is Outtake. Until next time. Bye.